What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Keeping It EPL with myself and my boy, Matthew Sales, aka at the Salesman. Talk nothing but Premier League. And it has been a glorious two weeks to start the season, one may add. How did you feel uh, overall after match week two? Um, we are here in the season. Uh, I, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, you know, we, we've got a little, we're going to talk about a little bit about the table mm -hmm. here in the middle of the podcast. We've got some striations starting to happen. A little so bit, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. It's very early. One very obvious one I don't think will last, but yeah. 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 Um, it's it's very early. Um, I'm happy that Forrest has a single digit next to their number, <laughs> next to them, and not a double digit. That's, that's nice again, very early. Um, but there are some serious question marks about some teams that are starting to uh, form here. Yeah. Yeah. Three of them yeah. in particular, which I believe you had two of those in your relegation at the beginning of the season i had one <laughs> I, think I had i think i only have one two no you're right i think I you're right think, i don't think i had uh your team's rival it, there. there's one team and when we talk about our losers we'll just start yep. with this team that is clearly um clearly in disarray and yes. um and more on them later say, the, the <laughs> tie has already been swapped for more casual gear on the sideline. Yeah, it's, it's uh, we'll talk about them later. But first, match week two is in the books. Let's talk about our winners of match week two. I'll go first, the, the obvious one. Yeah. Chelsea, Arsenal, right? Two big obvious winners. Um, mm -hmm. Arsenal getting that win. Now, this game I could go on a whole rant on because it was my draw of the week. Yes. And to be honest, it should have been a draw. However, on paper, it's not because it's 2 0 Arsenal. Yes. However, More on that later when I talk about my losers because I'm one loser in particular that I have a bone to pick with. Yeah. And it rhymes with Tolly Potkins. <laughs> Give it away. Or no shotkins. There you go. Um, yeah, that was not great. It's, I mean, good for Arsenal. This is a matchup that caused them problems last year. Yes. Uh, Aston Villa took both games from them last year. And when mm -hmm. I asked about it, Arteta was a little salty and said they scored more goals than we did. <laughs> I mean, factually, that's true, but that is a very passive aggressive answer. <laughs> Although, yeah. you know, what else do we expect from Arteta at this point? Who is just yeah. kind of that guy. He is. Um, <laughs> so that was a good win for Arsenal. Keeps them in touch early with the top of the table and what all of their chief rivals for the premier league title are doing. Uh, also they got the win on the road. So that's also, that's like an extra point. I feel like sometimes when you now get to face them coming back, but you're now home yeah, and it's later in the season. Um, so all, yeah, that was that all was three teams, win. all three teams, I believe have an away and home win already of the three teams, which they are who we thought they were. Yes. Um, so it's looking good for at least I, I I feel it's going to be those three teams and it's going to be a race to the end. I mean, it was last year. Yeah, I think we're going to get one of those again. Games left. Yeah, and it's it's teams dropped out. Yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, we know they had a bad run there at the end. Don't bring it up. They blinked. They blinked first. They, they blinked. Did. Um. Besides yeah. Arsenal, um, who who's one of your big winners? And you could be a homer because both your teams had a really good weekend. They did. Tottenham coming off a very disappointing draw, getting laid into by and saying, you know, a whole variety of things in the locker room reportedly. Um, and then they were without Solanke because he suffered apparently a minor Oh, ankle. but in came Son, baby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and got gifted a gift from the god known as George Pinkley. <laughs> yep, uh, yep. Who just handed it to him, put him put it on a silver platter, and unlike one of your losers, he did not miss. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was great. Obviously, Everton is struggling right now, so the four nil beatdown is what it is. But coming off of a very disappointing draw, it was good to see them get back on form without mm -hmm. some of their key because Bettinger still out with the uh, likely concussion. Mm -hmm. uh, Solanke was out with an ankle. Yeah. Um, so 
That yeah, was good to see. And then Forrest dominated. I mean, it was one nothing, but like it should have been more than that. They were applying pressure um, all game. They got multiple shots that just did not go in. Um, so yeah, so it was a nice, nice day at the, the you know nine o'clock central time Saturday morning was a was a good time for me uh, with both <laughs> teams going. Not me. <laughs> Didn't really have to think too much about uh, about them yet. I do okay. I did mention Chelsea. I will just say yeah. a little bit more on it is obviously they're a winner because the they put line. yeah the yeah. score line. Uh, but when I talk about the losers later, another stat that is very interesting in the game. But we called it. We said after what happened week one that they needed a big bounce back and they did. So they're a big winner. I want to go a player who's a big winner and check this out. Erling Holland. Yes. He had a hat trick for he did Man- in like six minutes. <laughs> yeah. For Man City. Now, obviously, Man City's a winner too. They're going to be a winner. The only time they're going to make this list is when they lose a game. Then they're going to be the biggest losers. Okay. That's the way it's going to work for the rest of the season. Or if they draw to like Ipswich, then we'll talk about it. Or if they <laughs> beat one of their chief rivals in a serious fashion to get yeah. a gap, then, you know. But Holland. It's his seventh hat trick in his 68th game in the Premier League. It's as many as Wayne Rooney. It's more than Cristiano Ronaldo and Jamie Vardy combined. It's three more than Mo Salah or Son. Now, at his current rate of one every 10 games, he'll have the record who is owned by Sergio Aguero, previous Man City player, before this season is over. Yeah, his they they was it before <sighs> this week? I think it was before this week. He played his hundredth Premier League game, mm-hmm. and he has like ninety four goals and thirty three assists or some so ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's out of control. So <laughs> he's a big winner to me, yes. and it's just it's but he'll disappear for like two games and then just score three and it's it's just kind of the way I guess. Uh, they're coached, I guess, depending yeah. on who they're playing. Obviously, they have one of the best coaches in the world. Um, but it's just odd. Like, you, you would think his anytime goal prop would be high, but it's kind of a risky play because when he does score, he scores multiple or he gets zero. Right. He doesn't exactly. have very many games where he only has one goal. It's crazy the way it works. But yeah. he's on a tear and a crazy pace. And um, for a moment, does I did think best, Man City would be a loser when they went did. down 1 0. What was that? Does he best what he did last year? I mean, he's the clear favorite. He's he's he has what four already? Yeah, <laughs> we're two weeks in, so I don't know. He's on pace for seventy uh, something. <laughs> so yeah. I guess, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is why you don't <laughs> extrapolate stats because you this early, ridiculous. yeah, 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 this early. But Man City was down one nil, by the way, to Ipswich for a while until they, they ended up winning three one. So and Ipswich um, should have had a second with a arguable PK that they probably should have gotten. Mm-hmm. I mean, guy was tackled in the box. So, yeah, I, I would. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But hey, they won. Um, an- another quick winner for me is West Ham. Um, rough against Villa match week one. Uh, last week, getting re- a really good win over Crystal Palace, which I think we called it. I believe. I don't remember. I think we did. Um and um, yeah, well deserved for them. Good to see them get on track. Like Chelsea, like West Ham, these teams needed needed to win this week, and they did. Same with Forest. Um, so there you go. All right, let's talk some losers. The obvious elephant in the room, and this elephant is ginormous. It's it is. big. It's blue. It's blue. It's the size of a tower. Although and, I do and it's getting give, a new home next year. <laughs> I do have to give them credit. Their away kits are pretty sweet. Okay, uh, are they still an Umbro sponsor? I don't. It, it, they, I don't remember. But uh, they're black with yellow. It's it's pretty sweet. Yeah, they're, that's what they get for being a second fiddle in Liverpool. Um, <laughs> I have to say this, and we've been talking about this for a couple weeks now. That we know that Everton has an issue scoring goals. Yes, but. Last year they were able to knock out draws at 0 0 1 1. Their defense was their defense this year is straight Swiss cheese, dude. Yes. It is it's needs to be fixed quickly, or this is gonna get downhill quick. And Everton 
is one of the originals, right? Original yeah. teams in the Premier League. They, I don't think they've ever been relegated. They're one of the six that haven't been relegated ever. And they just... They've rem- come close multiple times. Next year? This is the last year? They're, aren't they moving into a brand new state-of-the-art yeah. stadium? Yes. Are they, they going to be playing? Year, which I joked to a friend of mine is fitting since they're sinking ship. <laughs> they're going to go um, to a new stadium in the championship league <laughs> yeah it's a brand new stadium they're building it i believe in on one of the piers in liverpool yeah it's it's more than what a mile away from uh where they are now to anfield which is good yeah yeah um it's funny all the pictures of anfield you see this little stadium out there in the, in the, in the distance yeah. yeah it'll put a little uh more distance between the closest two stadiums in the premier league <laughs> where you can see them both <laughs> um which by the way second is chelsea and i believe craven cottage are the second closest. yeah they're really close they're they're both in london so yeah not, not yeah yeah they are in london uh yeah they're, they're really close craven cottage is a fun little stadium isn't it yeah, it literally yeah. looks like a cottage with bleachers around it it's, it's... yeah they're <laughs> adding on to it on the river side they're adding yeah, yeah, yeah. But like Chelsea, but Stanford Bridge, one of the crossroads, literally is Fulham Road. <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, it, Everton's not not good. Do they, they get relegated at home? Is it? Are they getting relegated? That's a. I mean, they already got a Here's huge goal differential happen. week two, and their defense Here's looks terrible, and they can't score a goal. They are, so they are going to hang below the relegation line. And then they're going to get the points deduction from like three years ago for spending too much money. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to look good for like six weeks because they're going to yell uh, and scream about the points deduction and the fact that Man City hasn't heard their charges yet mm-hmm. and whatever. And they're going to be good for like six weeks. And they're going to get just enough points to get them up over. I don't know, man. They're already a minus seven goal differential. Yeah, I know. I saw four of them. <laughs> Have they scored? They haven't even scored a goal yet either, have they? No, they lost three nothing and four nil. Dude, I'm telling you, it's yeah, not it's good. good. I'm just saying, <laughs> look what happened last year. They were terrible, and then they got like the ten point deduction that was then later. I know, and they were down there, and then and they were able to and fight they back. Great for like six weeks. Yeah, just enough. Just, just enough. enough. This year is telling a different story. I think they're in trouble. Um, I think who, they are too, because I do think that the teams that came up this year are more likely and more well equipped to at least have one of them stay up. Yeah, compared to last year, I agree. All right, give me a loser. Uh, man, you. <laughs> it's the other obvious one of the room. <laughs> um, like, <laughs> you couldn't stay focused for ninety minutes. No. And remember, the they were lucky to score that goal. Five, but like. You subbed out a guy that, and in that spot where he should have been, there's now two Brighton players who are basically playing rock, paper, scissors on who wants to shoot the ball while the ball's in the air. Yeah. (laughs) Put it in. And then your new transfer, Xerxes, touches a ball, which makes it offside instead of just like, you know, using his brain and scooching back just a little bit. Yeah. Too much work. um, That that takes a goal off the board, which y'all have trouble scoring to begin with so that's not great i mean i know that they did beat fulham in week one one nil and it was a lucky nothing and fulham wasn't at craven cottage which is where they struggled yeah um but brighton that's a sneaky little winner there because you're holding serve and i know like you're not expected to be there but hard to beat at home they are well, hard, hard to beat at to home. Beat. They got a new coach that's going to take a little bit to figure out their new system. Um, they're fun to watch. Let's put it that way. So, man, you you're kind of not a huge loser. Certainly not nearly as bad as Everton, but <laughs> loser yeah. category. Well, and Everton Palace, is. If we were doing a tier list, Everton would be on the top in the S tier all by you themselves. Wouldn't be able to see. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see Everton. Everybody else would be. Yeah. It'd be like that money ball line where there's like bad teams, then there's fifty pile and fifty feet of crap, and then there's us, right? That's the <laughs> um my other loser, Crystal Palace. Mm. They seem to have lost their mojo from when Glasner came in uh last year and got on the bump and they yep. ran from what, sixteenth in the table to tenth? Mm-hmm. Um 
now they're they're and Owen, they're they're, they're starting off zero and two right zero and two yeah um and they're I know having we made yep. the argument last week that they probably could have at least gotten a draw or you know maybe should have won if some calls went their way but yeah and now they have Chelsea next right that's everybody and now you get Chelsea coming off a six two beatdown of Wolves and you're zero and two and rumored to be getting Ivan Tony yep I saw that today as well. And let's mention that Man U, after their kind of start loss, now they have to play Liverpool in the game of the weekend. So, um, yeah, both those teams, uh, losers in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Crystal um, Palace a little bit more su- surprising. We knew that Man U would be up and down, but I-, I thought at least a point for Palace at this point. But I get you that. Here, I got one for you. Okay. And, I know you and I know you're going to want to yell a- about this one. Um, and then I'll give my loser player of the week. <laughs> um the wolves yes the wolves so, now chelsea had 14 shots yes wolves had 12 and they had 25 touches in the area and chelsea only had 21 well fast breaks will do that to you correct but expected goal over per performance for chelsea 4.31 is the largest of the season by three largest. yeah it might be one of the largest in the history <laughs> yeah by three so were the wolves just unlucky or they're just that bad <laughs> so there's there's a lot to digest here a i picked wolves to be in the relegation zone to you start did. the season so I and can't they currently are they really <laughs> be surprised they are currently battling in that yeah. in that area um I think it's a perfect storm for Wolves that Chelsea clearly had the talent and depth to go do that to them. And the Wolves are short staffed and, you know, lost a key defender and they've lost, you know, Pedro Neto came back the second week of Mm -hmm. the season to him wearing a Chelsea kit um, and then set up one of those goals. Mm -hmm. Um but I also just think it was a bad matchup for the Wolves, the way they play and what Maresco wants to do and basically setting all 11 guys in the opponent's half of the field and yeah. then just hoping they can stop a fast break, basically. Mm-hmm. But I will say it's kind of a loser for the stat. Okay. Like, how is your explain. stat? What? I was like, explain, explain. Like, the stat we're talking about is expected goals, which is the new stat that's kind of taken over the soccer world mm-hmm. the last couple of years, right? Cause everybody likes analytics everywhere and try to explain stuff and whatnot. We've seen Tottenham fans go nuts over Brennan Johnson because his expected goal contributions were like 17 and he only produced 12 while other, you know, but how in the world do you have the wolves? How do you watch that game? Right. Actually physically use your eyeballs and watch that game. And then you look at expected stats and go, Wolves should have won 2.11 to 1.6. <laughs> it's, How? It's, it's, it it's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. There are some analytics that I can understand and, and provide some context and like explains the woulda, coulda, shoulda. Mm-hmm. There is no way on earth that that, that that expected goal line should have been the case. I watched the entire game. I'm not sure the Wolves had the ball in their half in Chelsea's half of the field for more than like 10 minutes. But they the touched game. it in the air at 25 times. They're all on count. Yeah, because if you play <laughs> patty cake, then you get credit for it. Like, look at t- like the t- that stat doesn't mean it. I'm a Tottenham fan, right? Like, watch what they do inside the box on a weekly basis as they try to get too cute and then pass mm-hmm. up goal chances. They Madison passes it back and forth to like and Kolosevsky. I know that that's what that stat takes into account, but there's no way that that's that. Okay. Chelsea had 60.4% possession, the Wolves 39.6. Here's where where Chelsea was better, right? Yeah, we talked about Every the shots. Year. 8 <laughs> of the 14 shots that Chelsea we're took on were on target compared to 4 of the 12 for Wolves. So and Chelsea, the shots they yeah, took. Chelsea had 664 touches to 495. Right. So how does that translate to expected goals? The Wolves winning. Yeah. It I, doesn't make any sense. It makes zero <laughs> sense. This has been a talking point all week. So the loser in this case is actually that stat and not necessarily Wolves, which I 
I think we all thought Chelsea. I mean, we said it last week to Chelsea. We weren't even betting the game because we yeah. were so confident in Chelsea showing up and beating him down. All right. And speaking of ex- expected goals, this one's an, a no-brainer. And this is my last loser that yeah, we'll move on to the, the table. What's the expected goals on this gentleman? Ollie Watkins, expected mm-hmm. goals. Two! <laughs> it's, I can see it with my eyes! I mean... He's my loser player! Coming in with watching, all the hype. I was, I was watching the games with a friend of mine who has Ollie Watkins on his fantasy team. And he, <laughs> he immediately knew he was losing the week. Two! It should have been time. I draw the week should have hit. It did not. You know why? Because Ollie Watkins missed two wide open chances and then assisted the Arsenal goal. Yeah. <laughs> so it's he, actually a three goal swap. Yeah. yeah. For Aston Villa. And he's supposed to be like the next big thing. And he's all over the, the Premier League. And it's like, whoa, dude, you just made Darwin Nunez look good, dude. Oh, sorry. And Nico Jackson. <laughs> yeah. So sorry, but Ollie Watkins. You're on loser board this week. Yeah. Let's look at the table real quick before we get into our picks. Obviously, we got Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, all undefeated on top. Joined by Brighton here, right. who's actually, well, they're tied for second, I guess, because they have a goal differential of four. But obviously, we don't expect this to stay. I don't think stay, they stay. But, but like, I think they could be fighting for uh, Europa or something. I think so. I mean, they look they look really good. They look like they're gelling very quickly. Uh, their 31-year-old wonder kid of a coach mm-hmm. has them playing pretty well. And Amex Stadium is a tough place to go and play. It is. We talked about it already. It's, it's, it's a tough place. So those are the four undefeated teams left after two weeks. We do have five not-to-win not to teams. Uh, <laughs> Crystal Palace, Southampton. Ipswich, Wolves, and, of course, our favorite, Everton. (laughs) Who is five goal differential away from being out of the relegation zone? Yeah, I guess you could say that, yes. So, uh, are any one of these teams that you've seen in absolute trouble already? I mean, obviously, from 12 up, I don't see Obviously, Everton's in trouble. No, I mean, like, teams that are supposed to be better than they have been the first two weeks. I think Man U is the one that's literally on my radar. It's kind of after this. And then we'll see what happens with Liverpool this week. But if they lose to Liverpool and they they have one win in in three, and let's say Villa, who's playing Leicester the city, gets a win, of, of all the teams we expected to fight for these top six, seven spots, Man, you would be at the bottom of that list after three weeks. So yeah, I would say like Villa's down there, but they've had a pretty tough two first two games. Yeah, they get Leicester now, and 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 Arsenal. no, they beat West Ham though. That was a solid performance. Yeah, I mean, it was a the Arsenal was was, was just two Ollie Watkins goals away from, from dying, and, and now they was, get Leicester. So to yeah. me, I think they're not in no, trouble. I, right, it's mitigating circumstances. For yeah, Villa, I think, and to be fair, I think. The two of us had them not in Champions um, League spot. They were in yeah. uh, Europe, but they were in yeah. Euro- Europa, whatever the one is below that in mind. Yeah. Uh, Europa League Conference. Whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Wherever the one that West Ham goes to every year. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> so I think they're, I think they're fine. But yeah, Man U is the one that sticks out here. Um, Again, I guess Crystal Palace. Yeah, because I yeah. think we all thought they would we, be. Up I thought they'd be side, higher, and they're they're seventeenth. Um, and they clearly haven't gelled the way they did at the end of last year. So to be different, I'll go Crystal Palace. But yeah, Man U's the the uh, one that really really sticks out. We'll see what happens with Liverpool, and uh, they did have good results against them last year, but the time before that, I mean, Liverpool's been. Uh, kicking man use butts for a, a minute so um we'll see what happens but let's just jump into the matches now right let's get, yep. get into the matches for match week three um i believe every team is playing again this weekend it, it's going to start to change a little bit once other formats and stuff get into to play um but it's kind of a compared to what we had the first two weeks saturday is kind of a stinker not gonna lie sunday is yeah. going to be great but saturday is kind of a stinker so let's go into a few of the picks here I mean, obviously some of these weekends. Some of these weekends have to be a little rougher than others. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Um, 
Arsenal hosting Brighton. Brighton away. Arsenal minus three twenty three favorites. Um, I think Brighton will put up a little bit of a fight. Um, I would pick Arsenal here, but I would be interested to see what the uh, total goals are because you could get some value in under here. Um, yeah, I was looking at those and I couldn't exactly find great. Um, uh, it's three currently. Three is like the the average, and the underline is minus one. 20 with the overline is minus 125 so that's not great either i'm not obviously i'm not taking arsenal minus 323 uh, to win um yeah arsenal to win by two goals maybe <laughs> um you can get that at on fanduel plus 230 right now but then they would have to win by three because it's not even set at one and a half so that's disappointing so yeah i'm not touching this game yeah, the the lines are not not exactly where I think Arsenal wins, but I could see it being a one nil, and I could be, see it being a three two. It's kind of a yeah. Brighton isn't huge on defense. I know they've they've looked really good so far, but in fairness, they played Everton, who can't score. Yeah, and Man U, who falls asleep for half of their games. <laughs> um, Fair. Arsenal doesn't really do that. Um, and but the, Arsenal has given up chances. They have given player. up a lot of chances these first two weeks. So there's that. Yeah, so, it's, I could see this being. What I'm really hoping for is like a three-two absolute banger to start the. To uh, that's kind of what I think could happen here. Weekend. Yeah, that's what I think oh. could happen here. So we're not touching it, but I'm taking Arsenal wins. I just yeah, it could be by one. If it you're could... hoping for a three-two banger, then over four and a half goals is is going at plus three hundred. Woo! I'd I'd rather just sprinkle a little money on that than sprinkle a lot on minus three twenty three right you now. You could also get over three and a half goals for what's well, eleven eighths, eleven over eight. I don't remember. Yeah, but it's plus money. Plus money. There you go. Um, a potential. Remember when we call out the draw of the week? We got to say it. Yes. The, by the way, so far only one draw last weekend. I know. Only three draws the entire season so far. Something has to give. I think this is going to be the weekend where we see a lot of unexpected draws. I really do. This is a draw of the week candidate. It's not mine, but if it's yours, call it out. Brentford hosting Southampton. Brentford's a minus 135 favorite. Uh the draw money is plus 290 to Southampton's win which would be plus 360. Now Southampton is one of those uh teams who have not won yet. Um, going to Brentford, who Brentford's looked pretty decent, not gonna lie. And uh Cavalio, I mean, obviously they had to play Liverpool, but Cavalio is gonna be a striker to look out for. I think uh Brentford wins this one. I'm gonna say two nil. You think Brentford wins two nil? Yeah, yeah, and, probably. And it's and isn't this their first home game? Or were they home the first week? Um, that's an excellent question. I can go back and double check. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't. They this may be their first. No, they were home against. They were home against Crystal Palace, and they won that game. Yes. Okay. Yes, they were home against Crystal Palace. Let's see what the total is here. It's two and a half. It's the kind of like the main cut here. Um. Would you be ah, am I right where I think it's gonna go? I hate when that happens. Yeah, it's really annoying when the uh when the book set the line. But if you it. like the uh two goal line, you can get some plus money on that, I believe. I'm looking for it right now. The two goal. And not a lot of uh Fandle and Caesars is off right now, so they're not really helping me out. DraftKings is on. Under two and a half is plus 115 at Caesars. Hmm. I kind of like that in that game, in this game, don't you? Yeah, because it's either going to draw or Brentford's going to win 2 nothing. One of the two. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how well, I feel that one, too. And then you still hit. Yeah, I'll, I'll take an under on this one, and I am, am leaning towards Brent Brentford at home. Yeah. Like I said, they look really good at home against Crystal Palace uh, match week one. Yeah, they're <laughs> also just a better all-around team than yes, Southampton. That is true. Uh, here's a, the stinker of the week. Ipswich Town hosting Fulham. 
Um, Ipswich is actually not the favorite at home at plus 195. Fulham is the favorite at plus 130. Again, we talked about this ad nauseum. Fulham is not good away from Craven Cottage. They not. Yeah, I have a bet here. Okay. It is my draw of the week. Do, 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 do. This I can see ugly, it. ugly <laughs> game. <laughs> It's my draw of the week. Are there any goals going to be scored in this game? That's the question we must ask. Yeah, I think it's like one one. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but the I mean the month the, the lines are telling you plus one thirty five, plus one ninety five. Yeah. Right? So like not a huge difference between two teams who one of them is kind of expected to be mid table and one is expected to be in relegation. It's not a huge difference when the one who's favored in quotes yeah so why not take um, the draw on this one and, and get the the better value i am yeah, 100 agree they only fulham drew six times on the road last year they only drew twice at home so <laughs> okay. i'm taking i'm taking the draw here, here you go plus 250 um take it i can Put also it get i can also it. get plus 110 on the under of two and a half goals i like that too so there you go. Double bet. One of them I is am. raw and the other one is for under two and a half goals. Love it. My mine will come up later. Mine's on Sunday. So yeah, Leicester this- City hosting Aston Villa. I'm going to give you a bet right now in this game. Okay. And you, you can look it up for me because I only have the matchups. I don't have the player props. Maybe you could get it to it quicker. Ollie Watkins score a goal. <laughs> get- <laughs> what is the Ollie Watkins to score a goal line? Yeah. I'm taking the over. Because you know he's going to come out with a vengeance. Let me see. I can get player markets. Yeah. Um, Any time goal scorer. Ollie Watkins is plus 133. Take it. Take it. And I think Aston Villa wins this. How about Jamie well. Vardy at plus 300 for an anytime goal scorer? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think Villa comes think back this, strong in this yeah. one. I think they... And, and and by the way, they're only minus one thirty five right now. If you wanted to just pick them to win outright, that's kind of a good value for for what you're yeah, getting. Yeah, actually not a bad. Let's... When Leicester's plus three sixty at home. Yes. So take that and then put money on on our boy Ollie. <laughs> I don't think he's missing this to week. totally go and redeem himself <laughs> this week against Le- Leicester. Yeah. Your boy is Nottingham Forest hosting the Wolves. Obviously, the Wolves are in disarray, but they should have won that game according to expected goals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nine out four is a plus 100 favorite at home. 260 for Wolves away, and the draw is 250. This is also a draw candidate, but it's not mine. It's not. I'll take the plus money on Forrest to win. Um, that kind no. of a loss for Wolves can be demoralizing. Um, Forrest, yeah, this, I think. This has a 1-0. This has a one nil Nottingham Forest win with yeah, written all over it. Probably, I would be shocked if it goes two nil. Um, but yeah, it's probably a one nil nail biter. If you want to bet on zero zero at halftime, mm-hmm. that could be an interesting one. That's a great bet right there. I can see that. In fact, if you do halftime full time and you have draw Nottingham Forest, it's plus four fifty. Nice. So it's so it, that's if it's zero zero at half, and then and then they score the second half to win one nil. Yes, love it. I like I like that. Fifty on bet three six five right now. I take so. that. Um, so. <laughs> I just <laughs> saw the next matchup. Sorry, I had a laugh. <laughs> so that's not bad. I would I would take that, but that's my only. Okay. I don't know what the over under on total goals. Probably is. not a lot. Probably it's probably set at two and a half just by market value i mean most of it yeah under two and a half is plus 102 under over two and a half is minus 125 i'll take the under yeah what i don't understand is like over one and a half is minus 400 it doesn't make any sense <laughs> Do they think, well i guess if you get the draw at plus money yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. over one and a half you expect a one one draw then you but that's a pretty high, <laughs> like yeah, minus four hundred is a pretty. You could good... get some crazy value in this in this in this game. I, I mean, I, I under swear. one. If you think it's going to be a one nothing win, under one and a half on Fanduel is plus three ten. That's what Nottingham Forest does when they win. They win one nil. <laughs> that's what, that's what yeah, they do. Draw one one <laughs> or win one nil. Yeah. Or they win one nil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we've seen this for a year, people. We know. <laughs> 
All right, this next match is a barn burner and a huge draw of the week candidate. However, I'm going a certain way. Everton <laughs> is hosting Bournemouth plus 180. Bournemouth's a favorite at plus 150 as in a way the draw is 230. This yeah, could be a draw that. of the week candidate. I could see this being a draw, especially. I, I have a. I'm, I'm betting Bournemouth to win at plus 160. Me too. <laughs> Just can't from from what like, I see as bad as everything has been. Just keep on riding it. Why not take plus money on a? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's like, the bet. Until Everton bet. ties or, or draws or wins a game, I keep on picking on them watch, because they this look is a sneaky like trash. Watch this be like the highest scoring game of the. Week. That's fine as long as Bournemouth wins. That could be yeah. Could be five to four. <laughs> But in all honesty, I think it's going to be one nothing, and we're going to wonder if we still have eyeballs left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll I'll just read the stats in the on the Premier League.com when that game's over. Yeah. Um, I will be watching this one though. West Ham hosting Manchester City. Will oh, Haaland have one of his zero goal games or his multi goal games? Because that's all he does. West Ham at home plus five fifty. Man City minus two fifty. West Ham coming off a big recovery win. We. Just, Week two and Man City just seems to be rolling along here. Um, you, yeah. What do you got here? Because I this is a hard game for me to to pick. To be honest, I mean obviously I, Man City to win, but I'm saying betting wise or yeah, I do think Man City wins are going off at minus two thirty nine. That's not that attractive to bet on for me. I don't like laying big yeah know, big negative lines. I got a bet for you though that I want to see. Okay. Do you need me to look it up, or you no, get... I don't know if you can. Can you do exact score lines, or I guess you could do exact score lines, or or to win by two goals. I can last do any margin here. Last I year in City to win by two goals is plus three fifty. Last uh, Man City, the last five games, four games against West Ham. So so last two years they've won by more than two two goals. The last two fixtures. So last year both scores were the same. Man City three to one. This has a three to one feel to it. So Man City winning by two. Is or if you could do exact three to one, Man City three. I, I don't know if you could do that in I soccer. Do, you, you could do that in baseball. You could do that in other yeah, sports. Yeah, you can do correct score. Yeah, that you one. Look, look that up. City, Man City three one is plus eleven hundred. <laughs> Pepper it. Pepper it. Yeah, Man Pepper City that. Plus three zero oh, is plus eleven hundred. Plus three one is plus eleven hundred. Man City won nothing is plus eleven hundred. So okay, so so, so, so they're, they're expecting all equally to... <laughs> chanced. Um, yeah, Man maybe City you just pepper on all of them plus eight fifty. Right? Can't you just pepper on all that and hope that's what outcome? And you kind of come up plus money, right? It seems kind of yeah. Weird. I mean, I'd rather bet like if you're gonna say I don't know, bet what twenty bucks on Man City to win. Why wouldn't you pepper that twenty bucks over like five different exact lines? Yeah, or it, four it, lines plus the Man City to win by two, and then you get plus money on all of those. So if one of them hits, you're still getting plus money. That's crazy. Yeah, money back. I think we're uncovering. So we'll need to do a test and see. Yes. Let's do a test with this game and this. We'll do well, the analytics. Yeah. So write that down. And we'll figure it out and see how much we'll say. It. So split between twenty dollars on all the outcomes of Man City winning and by two. <laughs> right. See what so happens. Just go pure twenty bucks on them yeah. winning uh-huh. versus splitting twenty bucks over, let's say five different um, outcomes. Win by two let's not go over four. Win, win by four. They that that'd be well, crazy. Yeah. I mean, Man City win four one is plus eighteen hundred. I would take that one. So, so we'll keep it at three. <laughs> we'll we'll keep it at the most of three, and we'll pepper it in, and we'll see what works. Yeah. Now we can have fun with this. We'll, more on this next week. That's why you got to watch the show again next week because we're yeah. gonna have some valuable data here on betting these games and and try to find a loophole in here. Um, <laughs> but you agree, Man City wins though. Y- yes. Okay. Moving on. Um. Oh, he just scored a hat trick. Howland not scoring a goal would be interesting. But just say. Not scoring a goal will probably get plus money. Um, probably, yes. Chelsea is hosting Crystal Palace, man. This game is going to be interesting. Chelsea minus 167 at home. The draw is plus 320. I'm actually 
intrigued to bet this at Chelsea minus 160. Yeah, I am too. Because that's not that bad <laughs> of laying money. Especially when Crystal Palace comes in at plus 420 over the draw line at 320. Yeah, so also that... over three and a half goals is plus 140. Oh, Jesus, they expect this to be a barn burner. It usually is. It is. Yeah, I'm not touching that one. I'm just going to take the Chelsea at what? Minus 160 call today. Call it a day. I think they win. I think they win by multiple goals, but Crystal Palace, every once in a while, they have one of those games where it's four to five, five to four, whatever. Yeah. So even even though Chelsea scored six, remember Wolves got two. Right. So let's be real. If it's three, two, then Chelsea yeah. wins and you go over the. <laughs> Love that. Uh, and uh, this, this one's a big one, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is it, this is it for me. Newcastle hosting Tottenham, and bam, 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 my draw of the week at plus yeah. two ninety. Again, like we talked about earlier, right now it's split. Both teams are plus one fifty. The draw is plus two ninety. You take the gap, you take the draw. Yep. Newcastle at home. We've talked about them at nauseum the first two weeks. How exciting they are! They're it's 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 fun to watch again. They're also better at home. And then you have Tottenham coming in here. They, you talked about the injury woes. Draw. Now, I expect some goals. Yes. But a draw. This this game is historically one of the highest. These two teams, when they play each other, is one of the highest scoring games uh, on the uh, on the weekend. So I know, in seven I, of the last I'm saying weeks, drawn, and they haven't drawn since 2020. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, but in terms of goal scoring, <laughs> seven of the last eight meetings between Newcastle and Tottenham. Yeah, I'm looking at that over, right now. The over two and a half has hit in seven of the eight. And, and the last three have been blowouts towards one team, not always yeah, the same. Yeah, and both teams have scored in nine of the last ten. Dude, check this out. Meetings. The last one, two, three, four, five games, okay? Tottenham wins. Newcastle wins. Tottenham wins. No, wait. There's one where Newcastle won two in a row. And then Tottenham, Newcastle. They just flip flop back and forth yeah. each year. They're very close. The 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 uh matchup and the styles of play between uh the two of them is very interesting. And I and I suspect that Tottenham's gonna come down a little bit after their four nothing mm -hmm. blowout. By, by the way, the favorite has one. This matchup, the favorite, and there's no favorites right now. They're tied. Yeah, right now, Newcastle is favored plus 150. Tottenham's at plus 155. So okay, so it's moving as we speak. But it's a, it's a pretty tight. The favorite has won this matchup going back to October 17, 2021. We have no draws, and I'm calling it my draw of my week. Way to go out on a limb, Edward. I would say that that's, <laughs> look, this was my second choice. I wanted to get a little odd because it's it's an odd week, and I figured that this was the, the next most obvious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, draw, but yeah, draw the week at plus three ten for this one. Pretty That's hard to turn that of the week. Turn that down. So we have four really good potentials for draws. We've called two of them. Yes. This game, the game of the weekend, which we always save for last, is kind of has a little bit of draw potential. Last year, both times they played, they drew. It went two two. Yeah, they get and, a little wonky when they play. And 0 0, nil nil, sorry. But before that, Liverpool won 7 nil in 2023. And Liverpool won 4 nil in 2022. Um, Liverpool in 2021, both times going to Man City or Man United, sorry. Liver 5 0, 4 0. Um, but they drew twice last year. So this could be another draw potential. However, I don't see it with Man United and Liverpool. They're playing more controlled football, less sporadic. Yes, this year under uh, under slot and man, that guy can make some halftime changes <laughs> like crazy. Done and, every week. And what? And I'll say this before you say that what I saw last week. Trent Alexander Arnold got subbed out of the game. Liverpool had it in control. They're they were going to win. Okay. Yes. Trent Alexander and, and Arnold was upset. Clearly, visibly upset that he was taken out of the game. What did Ernie Slot do? He went up to him and handled one on one that was caught on camera. And after you could see Trent Alexander Arnold going, like, okay, good. Yeah, they've bought in. That 
is really good, especially for a, a new coach. So that way, you know, Trent TAA is it thinking about it constantly. He knows why he was brought out. It probably makes sense to the coach, but not to him because obviously in that right. adrenaline moment, you want to be out there. We saw Mo Salah get irritated as well because Mo Salah just wants goals and assists, right? So that's their nature. So yeah, it's disappointing, but Liverpool's deep. They got a good bench and they're healthy. Remember last year and the year before? They weren't really healthy to start the season. They're right. healthy this year. And um, Sobislav's playing fantastic. The Callister's playing fantastic midfield. They've had trouble in the midfield in the past under Klopp. The midfield looks a lot better and polished under Slot this year, which helps them control the ball more, control the tempo, instead of just trying to get the ball back as fast as you can and counter, counter, counter. Um, I like it. And we've seen Man United struggle against two teams because I think they they still struggled against full. You know they won. It's yeah. a lucky win. I think Liverpool has one of those 3-0, 4-0 I, I, games here. I, I And I don't see Man United score. I think they get one counter chance late in the game. So they get one in. But but you agree you think Liverpool controls this game? I think and, I think Liverpool controls it. Because um, these two draws that Liverpool had last season, to man, you were huge in the title race. Where were yeah. normally over the over before they have beaten them consistently. Yes. And they're a big rival. This is like the Dallas Cowboys facing the 49ers, right? Yes. Kind of historic. kind of a way. They're in different yeah. divisions, but historic. Historic. Teams Rivals for dominance of the league haven't won a Super Bowl lately, but they're still always there. It's even though Liverpool did win recently, and Man United hasn't in a long time. I won't rub it in anyone's face or anything like that. But um, yeah, and I'm not trying to be a homer. I'm just going over from what I've seen, and I've given my reasons why. Yep, Liverpool wins by more than two goals, or yeah, more than two or two or more goals. There's a, there was a funny joke a friend of mine told me about Eric Ten Hag the other day. Will he make when, it the whole uh, season? When uh, Man U allowed <laughs> um, uh, allowed the last goal in, in their last game, they were like, man, how long is uh, Ten Hag going to last? And one of his friends goes, he must be down to three hugs. Dude, <laughs> 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 he's... If he loses this badly, he may be down to one. Um, he, he might be. He's like a cat. Quick. Right now, the uh, over of two and a half goals is minus two twenty five. So everyone's kind of thinking what I'm thinking. Assuming Liverpool was going to yes. What remember is Liverpool this, winning by two? Uh, hold on, I'm in the wrong spot. I had to move around to go to my matchup page, and I lost it. Sorry, my oh, Google no, tabs good. are all over the place. Yeah, I surprised him with a question. Uh, spread. Liverpool by yeah, winning two. margin. Let's see, Liverpool by two. Curious. Liverpool to win by two is plus four sixty. Wow. Is that with a with a one and a half line or just win by two? Liverpool to win by two is plus four sixty. So they win three one. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit in on that. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit in more on that. Now I say this by three goals is plus nine hundred. I mean they they've shown in recent years they could do they could do that. They, can, they literally beat them by seven two years ago. What, what do they call their stadium? This the theater of dreams. Yes. However, when Liverpool plays there, it's the theater of nightmares because. <laughs> and when it rains. Yes. So, because what I'm seeing here, Liverpool plays Man United very well, um, yeah. away. So. Let me see. We got curious what the uh... last year it went two two so four goals. Last time they um... man they won five five nil four nil. Oh, that seven to to nil thumping was in Anfield. Sorry, I, th I thought that was at oh. there as well. And then they lost in two thousand twenty two. So, but. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm liking the two goal Liverpool by two, and I hate to do that because it's my team. I hate it, but it makes the most sense. But I can see this game also being a two-two draw. 
Yep. So <laughs> it's kind of going to go either. I know I've seen Liverpool play consistently for two weeks. Barrett be by lesser teams. Got it. But I've also seen Man you not be consistent in two weeks. Again. Also playing lesser teams. Yes. <laughs> so there you have it. We did it. We came. We conquered the table. We conquered our winners and losers. And we conquered the matchups for this weekend. Bet on an Ollie Watkins goal, baby. It's coming. And if you want to get crazy with me and sweat something out, Howland does not score a goal. Because <laughs> I'm seeing a trend with him. I want to see if it hits. Any last words, Matthew Sells? Nope. Let's just see how the uh, the, the ball rolls down the pitch. Let's see how and that happens. Thank you to the Premier League for putting the best games on Sunday after a full day of college football. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last time they do that because then the following weekend is NFL. <laughs> I know. Then we're then – we're, uh, yeah. I My Sunday mornings when the NFL season are insane. I yeah. got EPL on two screens. I'm doing my research for that day. Uh, it's it's mind boggling how and many I still screens have to focus are on NASCAR in there too. Yeah, and NASCAR. I'm doing NASCAR DFS lives at the same time. Um, it's it's insane. It's insane. But that's a, a story for another day. Remember, we're gonna have some fascinating betting analytics for you next week to see if our theory on the Man City game actually works out. We're gonna see, but yep. until then, you'll have to wait and watch again. Or listen again if you're on Spotify or Apple. Next week, Matt Sells, thank you so much. Good luck this week. Send your bets and your picks on the app. We're also in a sleeper pool where yes. we do our own picks. I am in last place because I'm a draw believer, and they aren't happening. But this is going to be the weekend of draws. By the way, no. I put my money where my mouth is, and the only draw I have picked in the sleeper one is the one that I just picked on the, on the pod. Okay. Okay. Love it. Good, because I need to catch up. So I'm just going to pick up all draws and watch seven of them be draws. And boom, <laughs> next thing you watch. know. Watch, we seven draws this week. <laughs> oh, man, I'm caught up just like that. Yeah. All right. From keeping it EPL, my night rants, to everyone out there, enjoy your football week and the Premier League. And uh, we'll have a lot more for you next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll see you next week, my fella footballers from across the pond. <laughs>